right away into the third talk in the schedule uh, by Nakamura, who will continue to talk about what we already started to talk about, M87 uh, and uh, MHD simulations thereof. Uh, good morning. Thank you, everybody. It's my great pleasure to be here to report uh, some update, uh, some observational and uh, theoretical discussion about M87. So we are continuing to discuss the M87. Uh, we still are struggling the more than close to the 30 years about uh, so the, what this is one of the famous uh, VLA map by the friends Owen, 1989. So the parameter said it's very highly likely and highly likely magnetized because the parameter tells that polarization degree is 40 to 60. So at that time, paper has come up. So it's likely to say that very, you know, the magnetically dominated case. However, some of, uh, some, sometimes the last decade is something struggling because they uh, try to people thinking about the, some Kelvin Helmholtz or the, some stationary feature. However, the, after 1995, the John Biletta, their co-worker, started working on the proper motion. No likely the stationary feature is not the uh, uh, standing shock. It's moving. Starting the uh, proper motion at the HST1 is up to 60, going to the deceleration. So now the last 10 years was a tremendous effort by the MHG simulation and thinking about the people, especially that we appreciate the VLBI observation of the Mojave, the lot of effort to thinking about, we know the proper motion study, more than 100, but uh, seriously people thinking about the, how the jet being accelerating rather than the ballistic from the core. In other words, how the BK, like a uh, brand of conical, scenario can be fit to cross to the horizon. So my talk is first introduction about the MAD7. The one of the biggest puzzle is the uns unsolved uh, question is how jet is accelerated and collimated. I think this is only the case MAD7 can deal with. So the MAD7 is the second brightest galaxy in the bio cluster. And uh, first discovered in the 1918, it's close to the 100th. So the lowest storm of the AGN jet because it's cross the one milli arc second correspond to the 130 RSS. The huge amount of the black hole mass is still under debate, three to six, but this factor is still we are serious to the event horizon stuff. And the misarranged, so BLX, the viewing angle is like a 14 degree. So far, a lot of the variety we can discuss about M87. As Sasha mentioned about, Due to the large black hole mass, apparently this is the second uh, black shadow imaging we can do it with. It's compared to the 43 micro arc second of the Sagittarius star, star. And also that we have a relativistic jet in the specially resolved up to 60. And also that we have a several uh, candidate of the VHG TV emissions, the core of the HST1. And also the AGN feedback after Chandra, we have a lot of the understanding in the physics of the how they interplay between the black hole and the feedback to the host galaxy. So one slide for the, our ongoing project, the Greenland Telescope. So starting in 19, uh, 2009, collaborating with the MIT HESAC and the NRAO, the Smithsonian, we are heading to push the telescope, Alma North Antenna, to the uh, summit station on the top of the sky, is 3,000 meters from the sea level. So longer than the 9,000 kilometer, it's achievable the highest resolution, the 20 micro seconds. So it's enough to resolve the black hole shadow. So the, our, our planning is uh, shipping to the Greenland to the next year for the science commissioning at the Turi. Hope after two years or three years, we are heading to the top of the summit station. So let's go back to the science. So puzzle has been remained unsolved during a few decades. So this is the, some highlight of proper motion, or the VLBA, or the, some VLA, including HST. If you plot the proper motion, the apparent speed as a function of distance, there is a huge gap. Most of the superluminal motion appear beyond the boundary radius, so-called HST1. At going to some deceleration with some variety of the uh, superluminal and the subluminal motion. On the other hand, the VLBA cannot deal with any fast superluminal motion. So this is a lot of the, the uh, puzzles for the MG theorists. 
This is because the Virginal et al. nature paper taking the 43 BLBI image, if you measure the opening angle, it's going to smoothly decrease. This is really suggesting some uh, collimation occurs. However, we have not yet fully understood it because if the jet is still cylindrical case, the opening can be decreased. So the collimation is, is really real or the, just uh, because the jet is cylindrical or not. So in this sense, we have no any yet clear view between the jet acceleration collimation because the MHE, both uh, events are uh, simultaneously occurs. So this is our math, my first motivation, go back to the almost 10 years ago. So by the way, the last 10 years, this is one of the best global simulation of John McKinley, 2006. The figure shows the R and Z direction in the logarithm scale up to the 10 to the fourth order. The color show the, uh, red color show the colloidal streamline, and the, the other color show the some uh, critical surfaces. One of the interesting point is, if the jet is coming in the rotating black hole, the stagnation, that means the jet separates the inflow outflow is some offset. It's not touch the horizon, even the energy extracted from the horizon, from the busy processes. In other words, the, this stagnation is dependent on the spin parameter. If we have a high spin, this separation surface is going to the black hole. If not, it's going far away. But, uh, you know, some of the some difficulties, the John McKinney is studying this kind of simulation large sketch without any reference of the analytical model. Just do it. So far, the thing is, no, nobody has dealt with about how the analytically deal with this uh, solution is correct or not. So this earlier uh, postdoc, who we had published the paper to deal with the steady GRMG simulation, a GR, GRD cold solution to mimic to the McKinney's numerical simulation. Our solution can be extended up to the super uh, fast regime because beyond the first critical point, we have to deal with some perturbation. Cannot be deal with the current uh, analytical model. You have to solve the grass chaperone equation. But we stop. However, during that, up to the, a few of 10 to the, uh, to the, the second, we can put the, all of the critical point exists. That means that safely our solution can pass both, both inflow and outflow regions. The point is, at the, a few hundred shibars, uh, black hole radius, the McKinney solution take how the Lorentz factor five, and beyond, they're going to saturate it. Because, looks like, sorry. That's off. <laughs> yes. So the parabolic tsunami going to then to the uh, conical tsunami. So no, no, no more collimation occurs. That reason why the acceleration terminated. So, but we are not sure this is a real one or this is a controversial story. But if we believe that some of this analytical solution, we just keep going with the manner of the, some parabolic acceleration phase. So the opening only going down with the power law and going up the uh, gamma law length factor, that combination give us some constant. This is the some last a few years, the observer favorite, the gamma C the relation. And also if you're taking a, like a, like a force free condition, the gamma divided, the gamma times over that pitch angle is keep the unity. So the question is, if we, you keep going at this acceleration, where the acceleration terminated? How the MHG can control itself or the background control? This is a still under debate. Because if really magnetization is the key, when you finish the acceleration, it's really magnetization becomes zero. That means that totally particle dominated would be the case. This is an open question. But if you refer the Mojave data, go back to the, originally we can see that this kind of the feature by Ken Karama, 2004. If you map the proper motion as a function of the distance, they have some envelope. It's going up and going down. So this year, Dan Holman said that this is something corresponding the inside the 10 parsec scale is a positive acceleration is dominated. On the other hand, negative acceleration to be beyond the 10 parsec scale. If you consider the deep projection, it's, go, it's gonna be the longer than 100 parsec scale. So somehow, quasar jet going to the accelerated and going down at a certain distance. So then, 
our motivation is let's go back to the image step because the last figure shows that there's some patchy structure of the lot of the uh, different uh, sources. So then this is our motivation. Pick up the one sources, how we can discuss about the acceleration coordination. We take the three observations, MARIN and the EBN and the VABA. So finally, the, our colleague, Keiichi Asada, did got a nice result. We found the proper motion, the superluminal, up beyond the uh, upstream of the HST1. So really, jet gaming proper motion is going to accelerate and the peak speed at around 60 and beyond the boundary radius, where the HST1 exists. So then, taking into account the, the scale, that this is semi-logarithmic. So the both, if you're taking the uh, logarithmic scale, you can see some trend of the acceleration, where the jet structure can be the uh, parabolic, the beautiful parabolic streamline with an index of 1.75. So then, essentially, jet have a jet break, something similar to gamma ray plus jet. So this is the first evidence, evidence of the AGN jet has a break. So then, after going on, jet going to the deceleration, with a conical streamline. So the HS1 has some variety of the superluminal, uh, subluminal motion, which observed uh, like a Teddy chains. Last 2005, they have a tape, tape flare. So after the tape flare, superluminal motion is coming up. However, it is interestingly split up the fast motion and the slower motion. So then, if we go back to the Owens image, Looks like to me it's a, some trail of the component is happening. Like the most famous trail is the ABC, but it's coming at FI or E. Something similar like a reverse component and the forwarding component is coming up. If you refer to the ON paper, at the both C and A is a transverse project B vector is dominated. Between them is that polar is dominated. So somehow we are seeing some segment. So then we propose the idea, the trail of the MHD shock might be responsible for the organizing the kiloparsec jet, starting with HST1. So the force shock, because the super, super fast shock, super, super fast MHD flow organizes the force shock excited, further slow more with the fast shock and slow shock. The only, in this case, fast shock can be responsible for the first order Fermi acceleration. But anyway, this is some basic idea what is going on the MHG jet in the MAD7. So the one hint for the uh, opening angle, because uh, most of the observer is dealing with recent years. So no longer opening angle is not the uh, constant, as I noticed, uh, just the power law. So the problem is, you know, the, if you see the jet as a jet, let's say the conical jet, no problem. But uh, we are failing the, some problem with the MAD7 because the opening angle is the increasing. And the finally, it's touched the viewing angle because uh, like a recent year, the Hada et al. studying some uh, jet is being conical beyond the some 100 RS scale. But still, I'm... Uh, uh, conservative with this interpretation, because uh, this might be that some down the pipe effect can be the case. But anyway, if you're taking the gamma sheet at the point one, expect the Lorentz factor at 11 or, some, 11 or something. This is exactly what we need in the, my 1D simulation of the shock propagation to deal with the optical or the radio observation. On the other hand, Asada's proper motion is up to the 4C, the probably we have, might have some missing component of the first spine jet. So let's go back to the some inner region of the GRMG simulation. So that this is a great acknowledge the Sasha's simulations because most of the uh, numerical simulation tell us the GRMG simulation does not precisely reproduce the BG type of the genuine parabolic streamline rather than some expanded. This is because, as Sasha mentions, even the very high thickness of the H over R 
but at the tip of the even horizon scale of the disk is very compressed by the Lorentz forces. Essentially, the toroidal component current distribution is steeper than the BZ solution. The reason why we expected BP type current distribution to form the more expanded streamline. So this is just uh, downloading the HAM code with everybody available to running the some simulation. So up to the Charles Gummy's paper around the two sun, just coming the steady step. So the two line shows the dotted line in the BZ solution and the outer extreme line and the solid line in the BP solution. Up to the, this time, if the jet is well organized, it's almost around to the outer streamline of the solid line, BP, but keep going. It's almost a steady state jet. It's up operating. On the other hand, at that time, MRI were growing, so highly, not highly magnetized. However, after 2000, starting going to saturate to form the magnetization, P squared divided Rossi is comparable to the unity. In other words, the corona is not highly summarized, but the magnetic dominated. We change the scale size with the 100 by 100 with spin 0.5 to 99. Still, the jet outer profile is well fitted, expected the streamline on the BP. On the other hand, the coronal region is very highly magnetized. This is one of the reasons why wide MHG jet simulation outer streamline can be fitted by the force-free solution. So I'm not saying all of the day way down to the bondy radius, the coronal region is highly magnetized, can confine the jet. However, at least a few hundred RG scale, probably not thermal plasma, but the magnetized wind or corona may be supporting the disk to form the parabolic jet. Let's compare to the MAD7 observation. This is our highlight of the uh, VABA and the core shift also included to extend the feature of the up to the 230 EHT observation. Solid line, uh, dotted line is a fitting, is a 1.7. Based on the, our numerical simulation and the theoretical argument, nicely fitted the BP outer stream line with the mildly highly spinning parameter 0.7 you are above. However, the story never ends. We still deal with the uh, uh, VSOP. It's already terminated 10 years ago. So it's our great pleasure to show that this uh, new result with the, lead by the KG Asada. We finally got the spine jet in M87. So this is a five gigahertz observation. If you consider the five uh, milliarcsecond or the smaller region, you have a very stiff spine jet is exists. Already 2007, the Kovalev et al. 15 years ahead in the ground base, the uh, ground base observation, they have some weak feature, but the north south baseline and the UV coverage take a lot of advantage with the space VI to find that this kind of the structure. So then, if you measure the size of the spine jet, it's really located inside of the cis part. More than this part, so if we overlap the busy genuine type of the outer stream line, it's really fitted. So anyway, MAD7 case possibility is both spine cis can be tap the rotating black hole rather than the outside of the wind. But we have to think about what cause of the, this kind of the differential collimation as well as emission property. In the numerical simulations, this outer line is some surface of the touching the pointing flux and the outer region. It's highly mass entrainment and also some wobbling structure, but slow down the popping up the bubble can be the case to expand the lower limit of the uh, speed of the 0.1 or less than 0.1. On the other hand, central region can be dramatically bright, however, become dim potentially become the Doppler de-boosting. Expected Lorentz factor to become the dark is about 40. 
But this is still, I think, challenging how this scale GRMG jet can be get acceleration up to the 4D. So the other important thing that with EHC is, as I mentioned, jet stagnation surface is dependent on the spin parameter. If we consider the uh, force shift measurement with the EHC observation, the up lower limit of the spin can be put uh, 0.5. It is consists of the shape dolmas argument with the layer within the ISCO size. So further go away, if you have a further higher frequency, you can more ex explicit the lower spin parameter more than the 0.5. So recent year that Abeli Brodick at Chakoskoy starting some thinking about the natural side of pair formation particle acceleration can be the distagnation surface. So the observation of the EHT core or the higher than the 200 study is certainly take some clue of the where the jet starting initiate of the emission. So final two slides, I give another new observation slide. So far, we have uh, only one MAD7 sample for the jet break, AGN jet break from the parabolic to the conical. But this is our latest result. It is submitted to the APG data. We got a very good, nice response. In coming weeks, I think we can push the uh, uh, archive. So this is our graduate student, Chin Chen, take the uh, very longest MAD7, um, MM, uh, in this is 6251 megaparsec scale jet. Lot of effort that by the Dick Palmer, so the VLA observation connecting to the VLBA. However, lot of the mystery is hidden between the bond radius, or the, in other words, the sphere of influence or the supermassive black hole for this target. We submit the proposal to EBN. It's surely they have some transition occurs. So this is the second effort, but FR1 type. Jet radio galaxy. But if we consider the like a highest frequency the ESG, it's a lot of the effort we can do it. This is something that proposed the science case for the ESG. So this is a creator 1633 plus 382. For the VLBA scale, jet has a you said it's surely the conical jet. But taking the matter of the cost shift is no longer parabolic are no longer conical jet exists. It's tend to the uh, parabolic jet. So the BLBI core millimeter, submillimeter are very important to study the inner jet stream, maybe non-conical for blazer. If you go back to the, like a Jolstadt paper, let's say that BLRAC, like 1803 or 366, in their argument is just a linear fitting, however they have a break. But if take seriously their uh, plot, looks like the uh, parabolic. So a lot of the hidden science can be still we can work with. So let's skip. Uh, so I, this is summary. So M87 is the best observable for examining the AGN jet with the highest angular resolution. First, submillimeter very very reveal the origin of the M87 jet, as well as the jet in the structure for blazer. Non BK model might be the case. The VSOP revealed the jet spine, so the BZ77. On the other hand, global uh, ground based BABI revealed the outer streamline is BP82. Both can be the black hole. So jet collimation acceleration takes place up to the 10 to the 5 is the scale of the bond radius, is a parabolic streamline. So probably this kind of the interplay between the host galaxy, the black hole, produces some jet break. So this is something interesting feature. So after this exploration, probably we can say that some MG paradigm in the in a realistic galaxy environment can be the case. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It gives us some time for discussions. I think we start where we ended. The last talk. Hi, uh, I I would like to ask you about the, the acceleration process. Yes. Uh, you use uh, in your simulations uh, called the cold assumption, so cold jet assumption. You mean the analytical? Uh, yeah, in the in your it's it's an analytical work. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. The 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 point is that if if you could use 
a hot jet. I mean, the simulations by Sasha show that the, the electrons in the region are really hot. And if you, if you take that into account in the Bernoulli equations for a steady state situation in RMHD, right. you would get a contribution of, of the internal energy to the acceleration of the jet. And I would like to know your opinion on this, on, on the, the what, what would be the role yeah, of, of internal I energy, which, yes. which, is, which is all typically forgotten in, well, if you assume cold jet. Yeah, so you mean that, yeah, essentially you're right. So our, our solution is a cold. That means that no slow point exists. That means that sonic acceleration does not take a role. Instead, immediately just starting the uh, acceleration by the, like a, let's say the, some flat space, the centrifugal manner. So that means, I think that, I forgot the name, but the, some of the paper in 2015, they are deal with the, including a thermal plasma acceleration in this solution. But more or less, the global feature unchanged because the thermal plasma, let's say the uh, pressure, uh, thermal plus pressure acceleration is a take a some limited distance. In, in terms of the some position, the alpha point or first point does not uh, so much difference. So I would say, believe still the highly evacuated region called approximate can be the probably nice approximation in our mind. 